All right guys, so in this video we're checking out the new Cadex peanut camera. So um, before I get into all the comparisons with the Insta360 GO 2, which I'm sure you guys are very interested in, let's go over what you get in the box. So get the camera here. I have one of the ND filters that are included already on here. This is the ND16. It also comes with an ND8, and yeah, they're marked right here on the side there. Uh, this is the standard lens protector that came originally on there. Now these screw on and off. Get this custom camera mount for the peanut camera. And it just slides on like this. And you do have to have, create some sort of a 3D printed mount for your drone because they didn't include them because obviously every drone is going to be a little bit different in terms of their requirements. But they do have the specifications for the dimensions of the mount that you need to make in the instructions. I'll show you that in a second, but just, this does give the camera some pretty decent protection, including the uh, lens guard there. Obviously the button is available and here's the back. And then uh, the, this is an M3 screw and nut to hold that in place. That's included. You get uh, different adapters here. So this one here, goes onto the back of the camera and attaches magnetically like such and USB-C here so you can use that to charge the internal battery or also um, when you turn it on it'll connect to your computer and uh, it'll show up as a USB disk or USB drive and that, that way you can charge and transfer data with this with this adapter. You also get an additional adapter here it looks very similar like this, but it has a cable here and a three um, wire connector on the end for your signal ground and five volts. And it's a 1.25 millimeter pitched connector. Uh, they, all, they also include uh, the other side, so you can uh, attach this to your flight controller. That's what this is for, so you can power it off your flight controller. Um, and also control the starting, uh, start and stop of the recording of the video and powering of the camera uh, via your transmitter. I'll show you that also later. So you have two of those in the, in the box and then you get this one as well. Also the same connector, three pin connector. This is a, um, a voltage regulator. A, uh, it's actually a two to six S uh, down to a five volt voltage regulator. And so you basically uh, connect this to your battery lead or some sort of 2 to 6S power and then this is the wire that goes to your flight controller, um, some sort of a signal pad, which I'll talk about here in a second, so that you can set up a controlling of the camera via the transmitter. Um, basically you only need this if your flight controller is not going to be able to supply enough current. This camera requires a 5 volt 1 amp current, so your BEC needs to be probably two, two and a half, maybe three amps total, because you know, it's not just the camera you're powering, you're powering receivers, GPSs, other devices. Um, so if your flight controller is not, doesn't supply adequate enough power, um, you'll probably have a brownout in your flight controller, which is pretty bad. Um, maybe at some point while you're flying around recording video, the flight controller browns out and you just basically, the flight controller resets and you crash. So you have to really make sure that you're Flight controllers BEC can supply that five volts, but if it's not able to, then this um, BEC is included, so you can you know, solder this directly to your battery connections and then get five volts out this way. However, this does need adequate cooling. Um, this does get pretty warm. In fact, this camera in general gets very warm if you're recording for longer periods of time, um, and you will need to make sure that it has adequate airflow on your craft. If you bury it somewhere and doesn't have adequate airflow, uh, eventually at some point it's going to overheat and shut down. It has thermal protection, so it will uh, turn itself off if it gets too hot. Here's a quick look at the manual. It obviously it shows you the different parts of the camera wiring that I spoke about here. Here is the wiring that I also spoke about, the different ways you can connect it up. Directly 5 volts to your flight controller or uh, using the included uh, BC. Now in the manual here, they do have these instructions on how to set up your flight controller 
uh, for the um, transmitter control. I will go into this a little more detail a little bit later. Here in the manual they show you the mount adapter and the dimensions that you need to create for the other side to mount it to your craft. The um, camera does require activation just like the Go 2 and you do have to download the uh, Go 2 app. Uh, it's the same exact app um, the, uh, from Insta360 and uh, this is a good point where I can explain what the similarities and the differences are between the peanut camera and the Insta360 Go 2. So if you just look at the two cameras side by side you can see that they're not exactly the same. The internals are the same, the firmware is the same, so uh, the image quality is going to be the same between these two cameras. So I've got a review video on the GoTo already and lots of video footage on the GoTo, so I'm not going to go into details on the video footage. You can see my previous videos on that. It's the same exact quality video footage, there's no difference. Uh, but they made changes to the camera specifically for the FPV community. Um, mainly the biggest, I think the biggest takeaway is for those of you that want to fly this on a plane or something that's like, like a long range craft that's going to be flying for longer than like what, 10 minutes, which is about what the battery life is on this guy. Um, then you're going to want this, obviously the peanut set up here because it's set up to power the camera on your craft, as I explained here with this uh, special adapter. You can't do that with the Go 2. It's a standalone. So for any longer flights, you are out of luck. Obviously, you can't fly the case uh, on there. It's going to be a little bit way too heavy and kind of defeats the purpose of having a tiny camera. And that's the, the main reason why uh, Caddx created the Peanut, so that you can get longer flights, longer recording times. Um, so this is going to be good for those, those of you guys that uh, put this on something that is going to be in the air for a while given that it has enough airflow to keep it cool. Okay, so here's the uh, weight difference. You can see the magnets attaching there. 26.3 for the original Go 2, and here's the peanut. 27.6, so it's a slightly heavier because of the different case. And then another important difference is that while the Go 2 here is fully waterproof, and you can, I think, go up to 13 feet deep in water, um, and it will retain its water, you know, basically uh, water resistance. It won't, it won't die if you put in water. The peanut is not the same because it has a different case. Um, I think it's because of the button here, the way this has been constructed. It's not fully waterproof. It is somewhat water resistant in terms of um, like rain and stuff like that. It should be fine. This says that there's, it's splash proof, but but not. Uh, submersible. So if you're thinking that you can do the same things with the go-to in terms of putting it underwater, can't do that with the Pina camera. It is not the same waterproof rate rating as the go-to. The shape of the camera is a little bit different here. I mean the dimensions are very similar. You can see you got the same connector in the back, but uh, accessories aren't going to be compatible. So here's one of the mount Exceptions for like a hat. Obviously the go-to goes in no problem. That's meant for that. But the peanut does not fit. So that and any of those type of accessories will not work. The case does not fit. So you cannot get this in here. I've tried. You can force it in there, but it's it's not going to make the connection to use the case. And you while you can use this to control this camera, I think there's a way you can pair it up. I haven't tried that. Um, you know, this is, you know, obviously these are meant to work together like such and you can control the this camera with this remote controller and this case also charges it. But, you know, they, they I think Insta360, they basically wanted to keep this sort of, you know, the people that are going to be using this setup here separate from the people that are going to be using the peanut for FPV. And that's why they have all these extra uh, FPV specific stuff for the peanut. Also, if you're wondering if this little adapter here or if this little adapter will work with the Go 2, I have, you can see the magnet fits, right? But it doesn't seem to make the connection. I think it's because it's slightly out of alignment and also it slides around, as you can see. See that? It doesn't, it's not secure. And it's because the back of the cameras have, there's this groove here in the peanut that's not on the Go 2 
that is meant. You can see there's a there's that um, ridge there in the adapter, and that is meant to hold it in place so it doesn't slide around. And you got the same groove or the ridge on this one here, and it's not going to slide around. So even though you're on a craft that has some vibration, it's not going to fall off. Whereas on this one, if you try to use it on this on this camera, it doesn't work. And you can't make the connection anyway, so you can't control it. I, I've tried that and, and it didn't work. Yeah, so obviously they are trying to keep the two different audiences separate. So if you're thinking you can use things interchangeably, uh, it's not necessarily the case. Even with the little ND filter adapters, so like these, you can see they have different, they're slightly different sizes. And yeah, it's not going to come out in video very well. I took the uh, the little lens uh, filters off. The threading on the peanut is a little bit more, and so these um, filters are just a lot, a little bit longer. So, I mean, it's the same threading. It'll it will screw on to you know that you can interchange them, but they don't seem to fit exactly. So that's why um, I think you're going to be pretty much just using the ones that came with the peanut and uh, you know unfortunately you only have ND8 and ND16, no ND32 or ND64 so um, if you're needing that you, you might be able to use the um, the freewell filters that I showed you in the uh, go-to video they will screw on but they don't go all the way down so you may have some vignetting in your video footage I'm not sure if that's gonna really matter for you guys or not but something to keep in mind um, if you're looking to you know use ND32s or ND64s, uh, you can probably use the Freewells or some other vendor. I think there's other vendors that make these ND filters, but they don't all the way, they don't screw down all the way. Uh, there's some threading that's left over on there. So there's something to keep in mind about the, the differences between these two cameras. Okay, so quickly in terms of the way the camera operates, uh, there's one button on here and that's it, and a light. And so I actually talked about this in the original GoTo video. Uh, it works the same way. You have basically, if you quick uh, quick press it, you have basic stabilized video, which is not the same as the Pro Video mode, uh, but it is stabilized and it, it's okay. But I would recommend using Pro Video mode. It's just that uh, you get higher quality footage and you can con control the um, aspect ratio and everything um, in the um, Studio app, which you can't do um, with the um, um, basic stabilized video that is going to be like pre-baked and it's going to depend on the orientation of the camera you're using as well. So some, if you uh, mount it like this, I think it comes out baked as a nine by 16 instead of a 16 by nine versus it'll be 16 by nine. Some little, little quirks there to, to be aware of between the um, this camera and that one. But the, basically uh, in terms of operating the button, you can either short press the button and then that will automatically start basic stabilized video recording. If you double press the button, um, it will take a photo. And then over here on the other side, if you long press the button, that'll power it on. And if it's in a powered on state and you uh, short press the button, it will record flow state stabilized video, which is the, basically the, the pro, pro, pro video mode. And then if you double tap after the, the camera's on, it will um, create a hyperlapse uh, movie. So basically turn on, long press, and you can see that the camera is on. You have a blue light and then short press, it'll start recording. And then the, it's a white flashing light. That means that the camera is recording video. Short press again, and that will actually turn off. Uh, they will actually shut down the recording and then long press to uh, turn the camera off. If you just short press, it will just start recording stab basic stabilized video right away. It turns on and then you get a okay now you get a flashing white light and it means it's recording that basic stabilized video and then short press again it should stop that and shut the camera off okay so i want to go over quickly how this um, pin io pin io function works um, on this particular camera so they give an example here of the pin io function on TX1 on a flight controller. This is just an example. Your flight controller might be different. In fact, I have one here that I actually set it up on, which, it, which in fact it is different. My TX1 is occupied by a receiver, so I couldn't use these instructions. I had to use TX2. But you know, in this case, I just uh, switched from resource serial TX1 to uh, resource serial TX2, 
in that in that instructions. And I also had to change the resource pin here. It's just in here. In this case, it's A09. Uh, I think in mine on T, uh, TX2 it was like A11, I believe. So basically, you have to adjust these instructions uh, based on the Betaflight wiki page. It has the full instructions on how to set this up. But in a nutshell, uh, I'm not going to go into huge details. I'll link that down in the video description. But you basically have to find a free resource on your flight controller. And basically, in this first here, this first command here, in terms of uh, making it none, it actually disables that resource or it disallocates it. And then uh, you allocate that resource to that pin, to pin IO1. And there's actually four possible pin IOs that uh, you can assign it to um, that are user controlled for the, your aux channel. So it's maybe one, two, three, and four. So to find out what's going, what's going on in your flight controller, you have to go into the CLI. And oh, by the way, before you mess with anything in your CLI, make sure you make a backup of your CLI. Uh, do either a diff all or a dump all and save it somewhere. And in case some, you mess up something and you you brick your flight controller, you can reflash it and then restore your settings with the saved backup. So be sure you do that. Uh, before we mess around with any of these CLI commands. But basically, to find out which uh, resource you want to use on your flight controller, first determine which one, which pad you want to use on your flight controller. And then you can type in resource in the CLI and see which ones are, um, are which pins are, are associated with that particular pad. And then, in my case, it was serial TX2. I set that to none. And then... I said resource pin IO one, I think it was A11. And then under here, this next command set pin underscore pin IO underscore box um, equals 40 comma 20, you know, 255, 255, 255. This um, will work if you're using pin IO one. If it's if if you have something that's already occupying that first what's called a box or a mode. Then this has to be this has to be adjusted, and you will have to read the um, Betaflight wiki page to figure that out. It's a little bit convoluted, but basically, 40 is going to be associated with one. And if there's nothing else that, if if your flight controller, which in most cases doesn't have anything pre-allocated to a pin IO, then this will this will work just fine out of the box. If you have something like a Bluetooth controller or some sort of sort of external device that's using the, the similar transmitter type of controls to function, then you're going to have to make adjustments based on what's uh, in the uh, Betaflight wiki. And again, link in the video description. So put in those commands and then uh, save. Obviously that'll reboot the flight controller. And then in the modes tab, a user one will show up here. So that will correspond with pin IO one. And then you can assign that to any aux channel you want. In my case, I assigned it to aux channel three. And then let me just show you here what I did on my flight controller. So here I have a receiver already on UART1. So my TX1 is occupied. Um, and so this, this here is the, another one of these little connectors that will go to the other side. And uh, for this one here. So I soldered this on. And uh, it's going to be hard to see, but that yellow wire there is going to TX2. And as I showed earlier, uh, I just put the CLI commands in to turn that on, uh, turn on the pin IO function on that pin. And we'll go ahead and I'll plug this in. I'll show you how this actually, actually functions in real life. All right, so I'm gonna plug this adapter in to the flight controller. So this has, this has a connection there to the flight controller on TX2. And I'm going to power this up via USB. And my receiver is on. Okay, so I have my receivers on. Go ahead and uh, attach this. I'll power up the camera. See, so I have a flashing red light. So we're ready to go. Now, on my transmitter, I, you, I'm using aux channel 3 here. And the way it works is you when you flip it into the active area on the mode, which in this case, I just follow the same example here, it's in the middle. 
when you set that, it um, you actually have to push it into that mode and then pull it, it's basically turn it on and turn it off, and then actually acts as the button here, and it actually acts as the long press of the button. It doesn't, at first I thought it was a short press, but it looks like it's the long press of the button uh, to turn it on, and then each subsequent toggle will turn will actually activate the button in terms of starting and stopping the video. So uh, let's see if I can capture this on camera. Go ahead and flip the switch. It turns the camera on. Now we have a white light. And it's solid. And flip the switch again. And we should start recording. Got a flashing white light. Flip the switch again. And I'll stop the recording. And that's how this is basically works to start and stop the recording on the transmitter, but of course you can always just press the button, which is what I always like to do, because this whole setup here doesn't always work on every flight controller. I've, it, I've had, I have gotten it to work on many flight controllers, but not every single one. And I haven't figured out why it doesn't work on certain ones and not others. Um, it's, it's a little confusing, but for the, mo for the most part, I think, I'd say about 80% of the flight controllers I've tried this on, it should work as expected according to the instructions in the Betaflight Wiki. Okay, so yeah, basically, you know, what this really boils down to is if you want this for FPV and you want to have longer flights um, uh, continuous with continuous recording, I think up to maximum is up to 30 minutes, assuming you have proper cooling, you're going to want to get the Pina camera. You're not going to be able to do any of these things with the Go 2 camera. Obviously, for shorter flights, it doesn't make any difference. It's going to be the same in either one. I think anything less than 10 minutes, I think you'll be fine in terms of the Go 2. Um, you know, you can do all the same, pretty much all the same things. Obviously, you can't do any of the uh, transmitter stuff. You can't power the go-to um, through your drone, that kind of thing. Uh, at least, uh, at least with the uh, peanut parts, uh, they're not interchangeable. So, yeah, if you want to do FPV-specific stuff, you're going to want to get this camera. Also, it's uh, sixty dollars less. It's two thirty-nine instead of two ninety-nine. So, you, you're basically the forty-dollar savings is you not you don't get the the case that has the extra battery, which you don't really need because uh, this is for a different purpose. You're gonna if you know, if you have if you're gonna be wanting to do longer recordings, you're gonna have to power it off your drone. Um, you're gonna want to go with the Pima camera. So I think that's gonna pretty much cover all the differences. Yeah, if you got any specific questions, um, let me know down in the comments below. That's gonna do it for this one. Talk to you guys in the next video.